Welcome back to ESBR's Boxing YouTube channel. I'm delighted to be joined by Elliot Grigg. In this video, we are looking forward to 2023, but we wanna we're going to be talking about one thing or two things, one each, on what we want to see changes in in the sports. Um, it's a big topic. We're going to try and cover it in 15 minutes or less. And yeah, there's I feel like there's a lot to talk about, but at the same time, we we're not going to go on for hours and hours here. This isn't a three hour long podcast, unfortunately. But I'm gonna drive, gonna go straight into. It. I feel like there's so many opinions here and so many things people could add to this. Whether it's like what they want, whether the sort of fights they want to see, or what they want to, what they kind of want to see on Saturday night. The the exposure that boxing gets. How do people want to change that? Is it behind the scenes stuff? Is it boxing media? Um, but yeah, we're only allowed to pick one. Um, Elliot Grigg, gonna dive straight into it. Thank you for joining me. Gonna let you, um, yeah, have the stage now. Uh, thank you very much. I mean, I think you uh, you obviously make a, a valid point. And I think if we were um, you know, let to talk about everything that's wrong with boxing, we'd be blending straight into 2024, having not showered, having not eaten, and just gone straight through it. Um, my my, I suppose well, the first thing when you said you know we'll try to sort of pick pick one essentially in the interest of brevity, and I think my I have a kind of a couple that coalesce around the same theme, um, frankly. So I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce the sort of couple of them and then I'm gonna sort of give you the, the sort of kernel rather than the other way around, which would be obviously to give you the, you know, the the sort of essence first and then sort of elaborate a second. So I was thinking less belts, less promoters, and therefore to bring them to the central point of my argument here is actually having fighters fight each other more often at a kind of elite world level. Um, I feel like there's a lot. Well, there's there's so many issues, obviously, in, in tailing in this. So the thing when I come to the belts, I think no one cares about the diamond belts. I don't want intercontinental belts. I don't want. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm happy with British. I'm happy then with European. Then I'm talking straight into like legitimate world yeah, titles. Yeah. For the four like world titles, I think I may not like it, but I kind of don't think that's going to obviously go anywhere. But equally, I feel like no more than that. That should be obviously like don't proliferate into into the IBO. Don't go anywhere else. Like we've got, we've got our four now. I'd, to be honest, I'd, I'd potentially even drop the IBF, even though they kind of throw in, they give people a pathway, don't they, essentially, to like fight. But there's a lot of mismatches in that belt as well because their rankings are kind of quite bizarre. But just have maybe, yeah, so limit it down that way. The promoters, I think, you've got a big problem, obviously, in this country as well. Well, not even necessarily in this country. Let's not, let's not be around the bush internationally with the zone. You've got Sky, you've got Queensbury. You've got, I mean, that tends to be obviously the three we kind of have dominating the kind of the kind of British market on the on the kind of upper end. Um, but then you throw that in obviously in top rank as well over in the US, and you've got obviously the the you know the Golden Boy and all those other sort of promotional companies over there that seem to just basically Mayweather promotion, wherever these guys are that just take fighters, hoard these fighters, and then you never see them fighting each other. You see them fighting kind of guys that are also in that promotional stable, or if they have to go outside of that, someone that no one's really ever heard of with a sort of padded twenty and zero record. And it just means that fighters like Tank, for example, <laughs> that you want to see fight other fighters. Fighters like Crawford that you want to see sort of get in there and, and mix with guys. I just think, yeah, it just it just hampers those careers and it hampers it for fans as well. Don't let don't let me start on a kind of subscription price basis where obviously you know you're paying for X amount of subscription services, let alone your sort of BLKs and your fight TVs and all that nonsense um, as well. You're just paying a lot of money for essentially what is in my opinion, a devalued and degrading product. Um, and I think really, if you had, I'm not saying, you know, go to the UFC because that's obviously got its ills with the kind of Dana White monopoly in a way, but for what it does actually do, and obviously you know, people moan about fighters pay and all this other sort of stuff, but what you actually do get at the end of it is fights happening regularly that you want to see. And you kind of can't, can't really argue with it from that, from that standpoint. So yeah, I think my main thing would be just to sort of, try if possible to bring things under under more control or even have you know if you want to have all these promoters have them working together but just have these fights being made i don't want to keep hearing about like you know i don't want to keep seeing interviews of Hearn and warren blaming the other person for fights not being made frankly or blaming like lawyers or blaming like commercial rights or blaming whoever basically i don't want any blame going to random faceless people that we don't know i just want to see fundamentally i want to see guys fighting I want to see Fury fighting AJ. I want to see Crawford fighting Spence. I don't want anyone coming on in the you know, sort of, I'm not going to name any outlet names, but, you know, coming into sort of like boxing media interviews saying, oh, you know, we've sent this contract and, oh, we've got to get back to us and all this type of shit. I don't care. Just get him in the ring, frankly. And that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. I mean, do I think it will happen? Probably not. But that's kind of what I, what I, what I think, because I do honestly think, I do think, you know, I'm mid-30s and over the last 
10 years especially it's almost like maybe maybe a bit longer but you had like the rise of matrimony in this country and things actually looked positive for a period of time you know Kel Brook, Carl Froch especially Darren Barker's obviously even from a snipe you had things obviously moving in, in a sort of north north trajectory AJ don't get me st- I mean obviously I've said previously about his record being somewhat padded but you had things going up like this and now it just seems like with the zone and with Sky, with box golf, don't even get me started on some of the box cards we've seen. It just seems to be like nah, we just like we just we just keep going down. We keep con- we just keep going down to the point where you, if it's almost a surprise. I don't know if you agree with me or not, but you go and log on to Twitter on a Saturday night around a boxing event, and people are just like, "Why am I still watching this?" And it's kind of I feel like we've hit a point where that question is almost unignorable because some of the cards are so bad. That you think, why? Yeah, why am I? This is prime time Saturday night. Why am I watching this? Um, and I feel like it's time, really, for the sport to either take some sort of central governance or to take some sort of um, coalition, really, to sort of bring it back the other way. Because I think it's gone far too, far too kind of money man orientated than um, than actual sort of fight orientated. Yeah. One point I just want to make before I forget is this year I think has been arguably the first year where we've seen the quantity of boxing on TV on this country go like that, mm. but the quality go like that. And in terms of main mm. events, total cards um, as well. And I think that's just the biggest problem here is I'd much rather have there is boxing on. It would be interesting how many in this year, how many Saturday nights there has been bo- televised boxing on in the UK, whether it's been on the zone, BT sport, Channel 5, Sky, um, because it feels like it's pretty much every Saturday now. Every Saturday, there's something on. Whether you have to pay for it or not is is a different question. But um, it's a, yeah, it's that's kind of one of the most annoying things is that it's great to have this all the sport that we all love that's that's on and there's always things to talk about. But it's frustrating because it feels like there's so much negativity about the quality of the product that we're getting. I think you see it in the, you know, in the, I don't want to talk further about any other points we because we might obviously cross over with your point. Not that I know it fully, but I don't want to. I don't want to take anything out of it. I think yeah, it's just that sense of because people will probably comment here and say, "Well, some of the American cards are great," and frankly, they are. Like you might get two or three quality fights yeah. on that card, mm. where by the last sort of hour, two and a half hours, whatever, you've got some quality boxing on. But that doesn't happen in the UK. I'm asleep by then. It doesn't really happen in the UK. Exactly. Exactly. In the UK, you've got you haven't got that. So I almost feel like yeah, for the fans even here, like. It, it takes a certain a certain hardcore one that doesn't really have children, I think, either, to stay up kind of till four in the morning most weekends and watch it. And it's like, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, exactly. Watch, I think, and, 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 yeah. And another point I want to make is that this kind of relates to my point, but I won't go on to that just yet. Is this year there we haven't ha- we haven't seen p- packed arenas that much. We've seen Tyson Fury pack out two stadiums in uncompetitive fights. Fair enough. That's the power of casual fans. But I was at the O2 for Waxy Richards and Jazora Pulev too, and both were less than half full. Um, Whereas KSI fights at the O2, and I think that was sold out. We've not had those big UK nights this year. We no one, no one can tell me otherwise. Zach Parker, John Ryder. um, I think I was a quarter full, maybe. you know, maybe we just maybe we need to take boxing away from these big arenas for a part because the fans aren't really there at the moment. Um, this is the worst. The worst I've seen as well. I'll say the worst one I've seen, and this I wasn't there, but I could see from TV was was Josh Kelly fighting yeah. fighting over Newcastle on Channel Five, yeah. and honestly, it looked like the first two rows of four, and that was it. And it was a very small arena anyway. And you're sort of yeah. sitting there, maybe even like a gym, and you're sort of sitting there going, "I don't even." This is more detrimental in many ways for for the sport, frankly, than 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 beneficial to be even showing this on tv it's just a disgrace one of my friends works for a betting company that had i don't want to give too much away but had their had their logo on the ring that night um and was even like i don't know how much we're paying for this but it seems, it seems far too much frankly if it's over a tenner it's too much yeah um, no exactly yeah. it's it's bad mate like we're not here to offer offer kind of solutions but is there anything else you want to add in terms of how your point can be made how we can be here this time next year and saying yeah that's improved that's what it's tough i think because obviously we've seen almost i know greg's greg from esb i've talked about this uh, at length previously but we've almost seen an unwillingness from the american guys to work with Hearn, um and i feel like 
it's almost a market that they're trying to necessarily prevent the expansion <laughs> of, of the zone over there. Um, I'm not sure how to resolve it really, unless it's going to take sort of some sort of, I don't know, some sort of, I think it will happen for mega fights. Don't get me wrong. I think like if AJ and Fury, if AJ wasn't coming off his losses, that fight could potentially have been made just because there's so much money involved. People are like, yeah, fine, I'll stick my hand up, we'll do it. Um, so I see it maybe coming for those fights, but I just don't, I just don't see it necessarily unless there's kind of, unless there's some sort of governance coming in or some sort of, I don't know, relationship repair going on between these promotional companies. Um, obviously, we've seen her and Left Sky. There seems to be a bit of bitterness there as well, um, understandably yeah, yeah. so. But it's just that thing again of like, well, both your products now aren't as good. Mm. So mm. like, I'd rather see you just come back and make like, you know, a better product, frankly, like in, you know, paired together than, than yeah. what we're currently seeing, which is this kind yeah. of like isolationist policies that you're following. And it just feels like like using John Ryder, Zach Parker as an example, which it was a shame how that fight ended, but that's a good fight. And that's an example of why these promoters should work together. Um, but I just think like the it feels like match from boxer beef at the moment is quite rife with the Lawrence Cody situation. And I don't see that getting resolved. Um, I, I don't think we're going to see any kind of boxer guys fighting on match from shows or vice versa in 2023. I don't want to, um, I don't want to take too much extra time. So you've got, got your, your script through. Well, we're trying to make these short and snappy so people don't, you know, uh, gray over the process of watching them. But there's that thing also, isn't there, around, um, the complications with TV networks as well. Like obviously, you've got like Frank Warren with BT, um, you have know, Sky with Box. It almost needs, it almost means that unless you're doing like a pay per view event, like you like pair doing, it's not going to happen for the smaller fights or just standard tele TV. Is it like no one's going to take necessarily like a ride on a parker on BT and on Sky necessarily on like normal terrestrials? Wouldn't oh, happen. Yeah, 100%, 100%. So that's another problem you these resolving really between the yeah. between the TV companies. Yeah. Oh dear. Okay. It's quite quite <laughs> quite. <a lot. laughs> but, um, going to be quite short with mine um my issue with boxing at the moment kind of touched on it previously is the state of undercards um yeah. i've got a problem with main events as well but i'm just going to talk about undercards um and this doesn't just go for um i'm not aiming this at one promotional outlet um yeah i just feel like i i i don't enjoy sitting down at 6 six thirty on a saturday night and watching an undercard um because i just feel feel like they're full of uncompetitive fights you rarely get kind of a 50 50 fight and i just think when you compare that with what we had five six years ago when you had world title fights in the undercard european title fights british title fights i understand maybe that was a peak in british boxing and we're not there anymore but i expect better than what we're getting if i'm spending eight quid a month on the zone i expect better undercards if I'm, I'm spending my time watching a bt sport show or my time watching a sky show um i just expect expect better I'm not going to go into lots of detail i'm not going to give up lots of examples like i could do especially with pay-per-view cards as well oh, Ex nice. for an example liam smith versus chris eubank jr is in a month uh depending on when you're seeing this come might only be a couple of weeks away when you're seeing this as things stand on the 19th of december we don't know what's on, what's on that undercard why not we're spending 20 quid to watch this i want to have a decent i want to have a decent undercard i've heard fraser clark might be fighting but this is his fifth fight i'm not like that's not chief support surely um yeah. so what's what's going on with that and i just think if you look at the pay-per-view pay shows we've had this year fury chisora fury white um the there's a couple of let me let me ask you a question here and because i was actually just going to look this up earlier and that is because obviously those are the big ones i think in this and it's no it's no um criticism to you if you can't because frankly i i wouldn't have been able to um i was going to ask you actually so for tyson fury versus dillian white obviously at wembley could you name me two fights on the undercard to your memory um no, I remember Fury Chisora fights because that was a couple of weeks ago. Um, Fury White, Isaac Lowe got bashed up by Nick Ball. Correct. Um, Tommy Fury fought against someone who was, I think he might the person might have been undefeated. Carol Atuma fought. Um, but the only reason I, good, <laughs> <laughs> the only reason why the only reason why I know these is because I was there and kind of did a little yeah. bit of research into the undercard. <laughs> but it took a while to fully remember like i don't remember what was the 
I don't remember what the chief support. Well, let me say because you, like you said, you actually gone to a lot of these these big events we've had this year. Mm. Um, and I agree with you. I fully agree with what you're saying here about the undercards not being good enough. And my point actually to you is, I was going to, I was going to say, I'm not sure whether they pace the events right, as in the undercards so insufficient that by the time the main event comes in, you're almost like bored of what's happening. But when you're actually there, that's what televised audience. When you're there yourself, is that pacing good, or are you literally just waiting, like you're just sort of sitting there in the cold or in the rain or in the dark, kind of going, right, let's see, let's see the main event now, or is it kind of um, some of them are okay, some of them are less okay? I mean, how is it? How does it feel in the in the actual arena? Does it feel like people are kind of buzzing by the time they're you know, they're moved into Sweet Caroline, and they're ready for the main event, or is it not? Is it not that? Uh, it's been okay. I think a lot of look a lot of the people who go to events at the O2 say are casual fans who are just there for Sweet Caroline and the main event. So what happens a lot of these arenas is that people don't actually go. To, a lot of people just turn up for the main event. So mm-hmm. the under like if so if you're on the undercard and you're there at six o'clock there's nobody there yeah. it's just it, you're in an empty arena um so yeah that and that's another thing I just feel like the atmosphere at events isn't what it was the atmosphere at boxing events used to be buzzing two three pre COVID three four five years ago um now it's just not the same it's not the same thing so not it's just I don't know, it's not great to be honest i don't like is do you have any because if you said to me like what what cards have you enjoyed this year i'd be struggling and i think a thing that annoys me more is that you get some fantastic undercards in the us yeah and i'm not saying we should have necessarily have the same as those but because in my opinion the zone us shows are quite good yeah yeah but I'm not staying up till three four five in the morning to watch those all the time i will occasionally but not all the time and it just feels like the quality on the cards when you compare US to the UK is vast. Um, going to wrap things up here. Just let me ask you one more before yeah, we yeah. do. Before we do, but one more question because I was sure, talking sure. about the ten year, uh, fifteen years ago difference. I was saying if you're gonna if you're gonna make say a perfect undercard, I don't need obviously you no know, fighters' names or whatever. But obviously you've got the main event here. I'm assuming that's a world title. We're talking pay per view here. And let's say you've got five or six fights beneath that. How deep are you taking? Kind of. Are you expecting a European, like a British fight on there, another world title fight on there? If you're paying 25 quid, what do you want to see sort of belt-wise on yeah. that breakdown or undefeated fight on that breakdown? Like, don't have to have belts on the line. I just want to see more competitive fights. That's what I That's what I demand. Uh, just because a belt's on the line doesn't mean you're going to get a fantastic fight. I would, like, I'm not, I, I don't want to, I, things, I don't think we're being greedy here or asking for too much. <laughs> on the Liam smith Chris Eubank Jr. undercard next month, I would like to see one fight in which me and you can have a conversation about that. that yeah. uh, that's my kind of base. And maybe not know who's going to win beforehand would be. I mean, <laughs> with it. No, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I'm not expecting two, three world title fights on the undercard. We're not, we're not stupid here. We understand there's not enough money in the sport to provide an undercard like that. Um, but, or just a, a fight where a, you know, a, um, a boxer prospect comes up against their first test something yeah. just just something like that like um i mean i don't think it's going to happen next month but why can't adam azim step up again next month future world champion one of the biggest pro- prospects in british boxing why he keep that like is he is he ready for a big for a for a big fight like you know british title eliminated next month something like that yeah rather than someone who he's going to yeah. blow away in a round which probably yeah. is probably what will happen anyway it's I, I know we could we could be here for a long time. We are going to when things there. Um, yeah, quite a, a bit of a depressing video, but it's, it's been, <laughs> it's been good to vent. We will be making another one of these kind of longer form in the new year with more changes we want to see in, in in this sport. It's a I don't want to use the word broken, but that's that's the, that's the word some people would use. There's lots of changes and kind of things that need to be fixed in this sport for it to be a better product for casual and for hardcore fans as well, I think. But we will end things there. Elliot Grigg, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much, man. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you.